Hi guys! Last week I showed you the basics of painting loose flowers in watercolor. You had an outline to follow and learned how to work wet on wet and paint behind shapes. In this lesson there's no outline, just the hummingbird that I masked out. This is where I'll work with the paint and see what develops. You never know exactly what will happen, but I'll give you a hint. This was a good day. First, mix clean, concentrated colors for your flowers. I start by flooding the paper with water. I'm using a large hake or hockey wash brush. I'm going to start very wet and keep painting as the paper dries. To apply the paint, I'm starting with a three quarter inch oval wash brush. I put on some purple, some red, and some blue. See how the red is just flooding out? Don't worry about that. Often it fades away by itself. You don't want to start by trying to control stuff. Just start with light colors and see what happens. Let the colors mix on the paper. This first light layer will let you know whether your colors are going to play well together. If you hate it at this point, it's easy to run it under the sink and wash off the paint and then try again with different colors. That's the purpose of these light washes. You can try out colors and design safely. Now this wash is just too wet. I tilt the paper and more water runs off and then I keep going. I put more red on the bottom left. That might help balance the hummingbird on the top right. At this point, I'm thinking of introducing a little bit of yellow green as an accent. So I mix the green with the colors I'm using. If you use a tube green that doesn't match, you probably won't like the results. But everybody's different, so do what feels right for you. I usually add three spots of any color, a large, a medium, and a small. Think mama, papa, baby. Odd numbers of colors are usually the most pleasing to the eye. alterations. You can use a soft watercolor fan brush to smooth out areas while you're at this stage of wetness. 
You could also dab up some of the color and reapply a different color, especially to break up large areas that just aren't interesting. But it has to be evenly wet and you can't flood it with paint. See, I'm using a small brush for this. Next, I'm sprinkling with salt. That gives me some texture. I'm using some ordinary table salt, which makes small splotches, and some larger salt crystals. If you're lucky with salt, you can get some interesting texture to incorporate into your garden. I'm not usually lucky with salt, but today was a very good day for me. While the salt works, I'm cautiously dabbing in some thicker paint. You shouldn't apply paint on top of the salt because that will kill the effect. But I need to get my darker colors on while this is still damp. You notice they're not spreading out as much? It's because I'm using thicker paint, a smaller brush, and it's not sloppy wet. Just a nice workable dampness. Note I have three main areas of blue, the middle and each side, but they're all different sizes and shapes. Common beginner mistake is to just dab color everywhere. Think mama, papa, baby, and it will give you good results. The salt is already starting to work, which makes me very happy. Since the salt is creating little flower shapes, I didn't expect that, I'm going to paint darker color behind the shapes and make them even more believable as flowers. The salt at the top has a nice shape too, so I save that and paint color behind it. Now you can start fixing stuff you don't like. The red that's spread out isn't fading, so I dab it back with a paper towel. 
It does leave a faint pink outline, but that's fine. Don't overdo your fixing. Keep it gentle. Last, I do more of the same, slowly darkening areas, defining flower edges, and lifting up by dabbing to break up large, uninteresting spots. I'm really pleased with the little flowers the big salt crystals made. I don't know if I could do this again, but I'm going to try. Last, I throw a bit of sky behind the flowers. I wet the area and dab on some of the blue. Let the color spread and do its own thing. Don't paint every inch. You'll get better results. I hope this helps you guys out there struggling with painting loose. You can certainly get beautiful colors, follow these steps, and your work should be successful, especially if you're having a good day. I'll post the video of painting the hummingbird later, so watch for that. And please give me a thumbs up. It's encouraging and it helps me find the energy to post more videos. Happy painting!